If you hear any noise, it's just Butcher and the boys, probably doing something horrible. Riding in on a messed up horse of father issues, unaddressed mental health issues, rage, ego, and avarice, the Amazon Prime adaptation of Garth Ennis' satire of superhero comics is the salve for a pop culture landscape dominated by superheroes. Like any comic book adaptation, it is ripe for nods and hidden references. But like a proper satire, it also uses the tropes of superheroes to take a jab at real life as well. Touché, William. With season three in the books, let's take a deeper dive at what was hidden in plain sight. Now, the core premise of The Boys is that if you gave superpowers to some people, it would be an inherently corrupting influence, and no matter how pure one's intent, any use of power will become an abuse of power. It could be argued that this is the struggle for Superman, not finding someone or something that can overpower him, but the constant calculation about what is an appropriate use of his immense power. Homelander's calculus is more about how much power he can get away with using while retaining the love of the public. This season, he's discovered that when he embraces his superiority, his popularity increases with a certain demographic. Now, there is no place where he expresses that more than with the remaining members of the Seven after he kills Black Noir for keeping the secret of his parentage from him. Hey, is everything, is everything okay with Noir? He was keeping secrets from me. After telling A-Train and Deep what he had done and why, he chastises A-Train for killing one of his own while the trophy of his kill sits between them. He's not just better than the normal people, he's better than literally everyone by his reasoning. That's important to get one thing out of the way for everyone. Your music tastes are terrible, every last one of you, everyone, everywhere, just awful. Sure, you like your music, but there is music in your playlists or collections that your friends or family or whoever think is just the worst. And they have music in theirs that makes you want to scratch your ears off. Music is subjective, and while skill and talent are a factor, it's not a stunt show. It's an attempt to trigger an emotional reaction. Having gotten that out of the way, Huey loves him some Billy Joel. We learned earlier that Billy Joel is the last bit of connection to his mom before she left him as a child. Throughout the series, oddly appropriate Joel songs have popped up, including Season 3's first episode that paired Huey and Starlight's temporary happiness as a couple with Billy Joel's nod to his own momentary bliss with supermodels Elle McPherson and Christy Brinkley. The message is clear. Learn music, date supermodels. Uh, no, wait, the other thing. The idea of dating above your level. Mother's Milk has, throughout the series of The Boys, demonstrated an enviable collection of t-shirts, primarily highlighting hip-hop artists of the 90s, including DMX, Tupac, NWA, Snoop Dogg, the Wu-Tang Clan, and the Rough Riders. Early in the season, when he stops by to wish his daughter a happy birthday, it becomes clear that Dad has passed his tastes on to his daughter, as he gives her a clock chain necklace with the telltale yeah boy of a man who made clock chain necklaces a thing, Flava Flav. Now, while Flav has made a reputation for being on the playful side with a no accessory is too much philosophy, he is also a member of one of the most significant political rap acts around, Public Enemy, who are known for their anthems like Fight the Power. Now, one of the tricks of building a sci-fi story is making the story lived in without everyone having to stop and explain their fake world to the real world audience. Sometimes that means just not explaining stuff. The weapon that can destroy Homelander gets a name, but not an explanation, BCL Red. I'm sorry. Not to worry, Reddit is here to help us out. Redditor2 underscore original posited that it was an extension of the BCL2 genes that are being studied to heal injuries from specific illnesses. There is also a, a BCL red and white candy cane available from Walmart, but that's not likely to be the case. A personal favorite comes from Redditor Ruckthor, which is brilliant in its simplicity. BCL red is big chest laser red. Vought above all things in the boys is obsessed with image. Little did they know how carefully that image was managed by Stan Edgar until he was usurped. Part of managing that image is fostering a cause that the soups can either get behind or Vought can exploit, mostly the latter. For former Payback member Crimson Countess, that cause is chimpanzees. Given the Deep's unique, uh, passion for mollusks, it's almost a disturbing level of commitment to chimpanzees. 
That includes a song about chimps and their inability to cry, which we only see a glimpse of in the episode, but there is in fact an entire music video to that song. Now, chimpanzees are a fitting cause, seeing as how chimps are often used in medical research, and the soups are essentially experiments, and thanks to the image-obsessed Vaude International, they are not allowed to show the emotional damage from being who they are. Set designers, post-production teams, and special effects artists all have one thing in common. They like throwing references to the crew into the background of their projects. Season 3 had a few. Show choreographer Amy Wright made an actual appearance on the show as, you guessed it, a choreographer for Supersonic's License to Drive. A-Train's brother Nate wears a school jacket for the Southview Roadrunners. Southview was showrunner Eric Kripke's high school, and the Roadrunners' junior high mascot was a Roadrunner. I didn't get a cool mascot until college. Go Banana Slugs! And finally, set designer Stephanie Kutrumpis gets a review quote on the tell-all book In Too Deep. When a network is contemplating a spin-off or an expansion of a successful show, they can sometimes test the new show by putting it in the already successful show, which is called a backdoor pilot. While it doesn't rise quite to the level of a backdoor pilot, a character from Amazon's planned boys spin-off G-Men made an appearance in the third episode when Huey visits the Red River Institute under the guise of adopting a soup. Actor Jazz Sinclair's picture appears among the other young soups ahead of her appearance on G-Men. Now, before creator Eric Kripke adapted the boys for Amazon, he had another prominent gig as the creator of Supernatural. Kripke has brought a lot of his Supernatural crew and actors over, including Jensen Ackles, who plays Soldier Boy, but is better known as Dean Winchester. Jim Beaver, who plays Bobby Singer on Supernatural, stretches out to play Robert Singer on The Boys. When Soldier Boy does the seemingly impossible and injures Kimiko, she ends up with an iron bar through her torso, the same way his character died on Supernatural. The video from a Russian soup experiment takes place on January 24th, the birthday of Dean Winchester and Jessica Moore and Lucy Preston from another Kripke project, Timeless. It also happens to be his wife's birthday, so he's certain to remember it. And of course, there's the heavy use of the Tarantino trunk shot that also was a feature of Supernatural. Season 3 opens up with the last-minute reshoot of the epic Seven movie Dawn of the Seven that recasts Stormfront in the villain role played by Charlize Theron. As the camera moves over to demonstrate the wreckage that the super battle has rained on New York, the Soldier Boy statue in front of Vought headquarters is knocked over. By the final episode, angry New Yorkers are pulling the statue down themselves. There are few pilots with an opening that is so dynamic it becomes legendary. Walter White and the Tidy Whiteys with the world's best waistband holding up a pistol is one. A-Train going straight through Huey's girlfriend and covering him in blood is another. Few characters can get through a season of the boys and not get covered in blood at one point or another, and Huey has a knack. He also begins each season getting splattered in blood in a disturbing way. Not that there's a non-disturbing way for that to happen. The boys might be the ultimate expression of the idea that superheroes wouldn't be that great, but any story in that vein owes a lot to the Alan Moore classic Watchmen. One of the early conceits of Watchmen was that the vigilantes decided early on that capes were a bad idea, with Dollar Bill getting shot after his cape got caught in a revolving door. When Soldier Boy and Homelander finally meet, Soldier Boy isn't impressed with Homelander's cape. You think you look strong? You're wearing a cape. Later, to drive his point home, he uses the cape to prevent Homelander from getting away and then throws him. Okie dokie, another rapid fire category. While the show has taken cues from the comics, it is definitely on its own trajectory. That doesn't mean that it ignores the comics altogether, though. Episode names The Instant White Hot Wild, Here Comes a Candle to Light You to Bed, The Last Time to Look on This World of Lies, Glorious Five Year Plan, and Barbary Coast all come from individual comics that echo the story in the episode. Maeve provides Butcher with the clue he needs to find a Homelander killing weapon. In the comics, a disgruntled Maeve passes information to Butcher. In a dark take of All-Star Superman number 10, Homelander goes from trying to save someone about to jump to telling them to jump, where, in response to a spiritual savior, Homelander tells her that he is the only man in the sky, something he told the family of raffle winners before he dropped them and their car from 30,000 feet. Because Homelander is the worst. 
Now, the boy's satire isn't just aimed at comic book movie conventions. In reality, The Boys is just as much a satire of modern society through the vehicle of giving our world superpowers and how we would commoditize it and make it the worst. Go on, son. That includes putting the members of the Seven in some of the most cringiest celebrity moments from the real world. For example, a take on the ill-conceived video of various celebrities singing Imagine by John Lennon, this time done in the wake of Soldier Boy going kaboom. A-Train takes part in a self-promoting version of the notoriously tone-deaf Kendall Jenner ad that suggested Pepsi can solve social tensions. Homelander's response to the return of Soldier Boy is not to hunt him down, but to get on the 24-hour news cycle where Homelander encourages everyone to continue going out and buying things and going places. Reminiscent of then-President Bush's response to September 11th by telling people to go shopping. I am very excited for everyone to meet the real me. You know what's probably a booming industry in the world of the boys? Crime scene cleaning. There's probably someone out there who prides themselves on how quickly they can clean up a total body explosion. 